For all we have and are, for all our children's fate, stand up and meet the war. The Hun is at the gate. Now the Germans were west of Brussels, and still they came on. It seemed that nothing could stop them. The Schlieffen plan was working beautifully. The plan designed to carry the Germans through Belgium, brushing the Channel coast, then down through France, right round west of Paris, to attack the French armies from the rear. Now everywhere the French were in confusion. From Verdun to Charleroi, they were falling back. And the German right wing, three armies, three quarters of a million men, was coming into position to make its sweep. This was the loaded tip of von Schlieffen's flail, and the heaviest weight in the tip was General von Kluck's first army. They skirted the historic battlefield of Waterloo, where 99 years before, British and Germans together had fought the French. Ahead lay a dreary industrial region. As they entered it, coming straight towards them without knowing, oblivious of danger, believing that they were joining in a great Allied advance, marched the four divisions of the British Expeditionary Force. Only the cavalrymen, under General Allenby, cautiously scouting ahead, were aware of the German presence. Then, suddenly, amid the slag heaps and straggling villages of a mining area, the army was ordered to halt and dig in. Field Marshal Sir John French had received new information. There would be no advance, but instead a defensive battle. The British line formed a broad angle. The left flank, where the danger was greatest, was wide open. At its apex stood the little red brick town of Mons. Sunday, August the 23rd, came in with mist and scattered showers of rain. Church bells were ringing, calling the devout Belgian people to early mass. In their Sunday best, they stopped for a moment to stare at the strange-looking foreign soldiers who filled their town. They found it hard to believe that war was upon them. But these were the men of General Smith Dorian's Second Army Corps, digging in along the banks of the Mons Canal, preparing an awkward position for defence. Quite suddenly, out of the blue, we saw cavalry coming towards us. They came, they'd uh, come out of the right, of our, on our right flank. I said, good gracious, it's Germans. So we immediately started to fire. We fired Fuse Nort, and uh, they got about three, 300 yards, I suppose, from the guns, and they wouldn't face it. By nine o'clock, the guns were in full cry, and the British Army began to learn about Jack Johnsons and Black Mariahs and coal boxes, the names the soldiers gave to the deafening, shattering explosions of the German heavy shells. We were in the trenches waiting for them, but we didn't expect anything like the smashing blow that struck us. All at once the sky began to rain down bullets and shells. I saw shells bursting to right and left of me, and I saw many a good comrade go out. Then the German infantry began to come forward, surging towards the canal banks and the crossings at locks and bridges. There was a surprise in store for them too. They were in solid square blocks, standing out sharply against the skyline, and you couldn't help hitting them. We lay in our trenches with not a sound or sign. They crept nearer and nearer, and then our officers gave the word. The Germans seemed to stagger like a drunk man suddenly hit between the eyes after which they made a run for us, shouting some outlandish cry that we couldn't make out. Poor devils of infantry. They advanced in companies of quite 150 men in files five deep. The first company were simply blasted away to heaven by a volley at 700 yards. And in their insane formation, every bullet was almost sure to find two bullets. They had absolutely no chance. This was the mad minute, 15 rounds of aimed rifle fire per minute that the British infantry alone were trained to do. At Mons it worked the trick. The Germans were shot flat. Our first battle is a heavy, an unheard of heavy defeat. And against the English, 
The English we laughed at. Well entrenched and completely hidden, the enemy opened a murderous fire. The casualties increased, the rushes became shorter. With bloody losses, the attack gradually came to an end. But it was all to no avail. On the left flank of the British and on the right flank of their French neighbours, German pressure was building up. Sir Henry Wilson, the Deputy Chief of Staff, clung obstinately to the hope of actually advancing. And then... At 11 p.m., news came that the French Fifth Army was falling back still further. Between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., we drafted orders for retirement to the line Maubeuge Valenciennes. The retreat from Mons had begun. very disappointed when we got the order that we have to break off battle and retreat. To do this is not an easy thing. It's quite easy to join battle, but it's not easy to break it off. However, we put down a curtain of fire between us and the Germans, which enabled the infantry and cavalry to get away. Up to all the tricks of the trade from their experience of small wars, the English veterans brilliantly understood how to slip off at the last moment. On they came again. The Schlieffen plan was still apparently going like clockwork. The whole Allied line was going back, the end of a dream. And for thousands of frightened, homeless people, the end of a way of life. On the other side of Europe, the story was rather different. Here, it seemed, the Schlieffen plan was not working out so well. A Russian steamroller was on the move. Gathering slowly from the distant provinces of the Tsar's empire, the limitless manpower of Russia assembled and marched to war. Movement was slow across the endless plains with their bad roads and their railways few and far between. Army by army, with ponderous deliberation, the Russians gathered on the Galician front, where the equally slow-moving Austrians were taking up their positions. But in East Prussia, where the Schlieffen plan, counting on the slowness of Russian mobilization, allowed only nine divisions to hold the enemy off, the Germans received a shock. On August the 17th, the Russians invaded East Prussia. This, the Germans had not expected. German people tasted the tragedies which Belgians and French were already learning to know too well. It was the fear of the Muscovite hordes, the ancient savage reputation of the Cossacks, the terror of men with slant eyes that drove these people out of their neat homes, away from the fields and farms on which they had worked so hard. Orderly, submissive, sick at heart, they made their painful parting. On August the 20th, the day the Germans entered Brussels, their eastern army was defeated at Gumbinnen. Königsberg, capital of East Prussia, was threatened by the Russian advance. And on August the 23rd, the day of Mons, the Russians won another victory at Frankenau. <laughs> 